Welcome to the Security Operations CISO Dashboard for Security Incident Response, Vulnerability Response, using our Performance Analytics offering. For today's discussion, we're going to be quickly going through some of the security initiatives on how we can establish better visibility, value, and vindication on how we actually go through identifying the most critical areas, concerns, and areas of our attack surface that require immediate attention from the CISO persona. First and foremost, we'll go ahead and start with our overview. Now in this custom view, we have our policy compliance and configuration compliance. Here we can see the assisted controls that are relevant to this particular compliance initiative that will pertain to the specific assets, observables, and vulnerabilities across these particular compliance initiatives as it pertains to our configuration. Here we can see our past, our errors, as well as failed configuration compliance areas that require immediate attention from a CISO's perspective. On the right-hand side, we have our vulnerability response, average time to close. Now, in this case, we're looking at the mean time to remediation we're on a seven-day running average. And by leveraging predictive intelligence, we can start to forecast where we are trending in terms of that average time to close vulnerable items within the organization. Now, what's relevant here is having that first field of scope view across the entire landscape of your IT infrastructure, but also understanding how these assets are being handled in a timely fashion. On the right-hand side, we have our approval requests. This could pertain to a specific approvals that require executive leadership to approve these requests to kick off executive workflows, sub-workflows, or specific actions within a controlled state. In this particular instance, this could be a security incident that requires someone, in this case the CISO, to approve the actual closure of a ticket before final sign-off and post-analysis recommendations. Down here at the bottom, we have our risk overviews and security incident response average time to respond. Both of these views are completely customizable and these widgets can be used at any time to be configured for specific metrics and performance analytics reports that can also be pulled natively within this dashboard. Below, we can also go ahead and toggle specific areas for our metrics. So as the CISO, we're able to see the exact information we need at a glance in real time without having to mess around with specific spreadsheets or pulling from multiple data sources. Rather, we have this dashboard to help facilitate and curate the story of successful security posture within the business. And finally, our security automation labor values and hours saved. The proof is in the platform and we're able to calculate the automation as well as operational overhead costs. And now we can start to decrease costs around our SOC teams and also improve overall team collaboration on hours saved which then allows the CISO to focus on more higher priority objectives and business positive outcomes. Now, of course, this is a high level overview as a CISO executive, but if we wanna get a little bit more detailed, we can also navigate to our incident handling. Now in this particular view, this can also facilitate conversations around security incident backlog growth and prioritizations, prioritizing security incidents in terms of specific record values. This icon indicating real time that we have 167 P2 incidents versus our 619 priority one incidents. Immediately we can see the scope and the volume of how well our security teams are performing and start to excavate more information on why our priority one incidents have spiked. Moving down below, we can see our basic security indicators, indicating a number of different tables and values across new, closed, and our backlog growth in terms of those security incident records and those navigating trends. Now, this is one of my favorite views, the security incident tree map, for two main reasons. One, we can break this down by business criticality and different categories across your victim stats, your assignment groups, and also business categories but also the indicators, being able to break this down from critical, high criticality, or non-critical business criticalities. 
immediately I'm able to say, we have 41 security incidents that are tied to IT specific services. This could entail that there is a issue on a specific server, an appliance, or specifically with a user. And this allows me to execute more information and that security incident record and list of all of the records tied to this particular security incident business criticality that has been set to critical. From here, I can go down into the categorization stats. As a CISO, I wanna know if we've had a couple of phishing scam attempts, and I wanna know how many we've had in the past, let's say 30 days. Well, by simply navigating to our categorization stats, maybe I wanna have the full scope of all the categories that we've supplied within the security incident response form and our service catalog. By simply selecting the categorization stats, I can see we have a total of 135 phishing security incident records, 21 unauthorized access, and 12 that pertain to the malicious code activity category. Instantly, I have the results that I need, and now I can start to make data-driven decisions. Moving down the line here, we have our assignment stats by groups. So now I can be abreast of what my teams are involved with and how many incident records are applied to those specific assignment groups. And lastly, my victim stats are my repeat offenders. Not only can I see what resources have been affected for those security incidents, but I can also look at the specific affected user in question. This will help me tailor better performance handling when it comes to further educating and creating a much more manageable and enjoyable experience when promoting security posture within the organization. Now, moving over to our systems hardening, as I mentioned before, we work in conjunction with the security incident response and vulnerability response product capabilities. On the vulnerability response side, you also have performance analytics, which allow you to look at the same metrics and also excavate some more information around vulnerable items, compliance, and your vulnerability IDs, as well as the most vulnerable CIs by class. Again, all of this information is right at the fingertips of your CISO, and you're able to go and through all of the different in, all of the different metrics, which will give you valuable insights into critical vulnerable items, overdue criticalities that might require immediate attention, as well as understanding the threat landscape. Moving back over to our overview slide, one of the questions I also hear is, how did we actually get here? Now, out of the box, there are some functionalities and certainly a number of widgets that are pre-populate this information. But what if I want to understand where these tables exist so I can create some of these more dynamic reports? Simply by clicking on the three-layered hamburger icon, we can go to the launch dependency assessment. In this particular dependency view, this will break down all of the different categories in terms of all of the different areas that we've covered and focused on today as part of the dashboard discussion. As you can see here, our top level is the CISO dashboard. On the right-hand side, we also have a legend to help navigate us through this particular breakdown. Here we've selected incident handling, and I wanna break this down to show the specific table used for the number of closed security incidents. And by breaking this down, I can actually see that the dependency is based on our security incident table. And in addition, we can show the schema map, we can edit or show who it's being used by. So as a CISO, I'm also able to create reports on the fly. And this simply gives me a breakdown of those capabilities and how to assess this moving forward to create my own dynamic reports as well as dashboards. Moving over to the CISO dashboard for vulnerability response is another key area where we can start to focus on vulnerabilities at a glance, but also excavate more information as it pertains to the vulnerabilities per asset, our mean time to remediate, as well as the average age of open vulnerabilities. On this particular dashboard, we've gone ahead and categorized this by risk rating. We also have the option for age range and internet facing and also selecting elements from highest criticality to no criticality. Here we can also view the services with most vulnerabilities and most importantly, countries with the most vulnerabilities based on location. So for organizations that have multiple locations or instances, 
you're able to curate all this information in a collaborative effort to understand that particular threat landscape and where the highest risk exists from a location-based perspective. We can also calculate the monthly remediation efficiency. How well is the SOC team doing on the vulnerability side for your analysts? The proof is in the platform and we provide these particular formulas out of the box. We can also see our scan coverage, the monthly scan coverage percentages, and then our top 10 assignment groups for deferred vulnerabilities versus lowest remediation target adherence. Now, one of the most performance-driven analytics areas is gonna be our recommended actions. And as a CISO and a vulnerable analyst, we'll wanna make sure we have the top 10 vulnerabilities right on the surface of what we're looking for. So here we can understand the threat landscape by leveraging these recommended actions here within this breakdown table. Not only can I see the vulnerability and the summary, but I can also see the vulnerable items attached to the specific CVE, when it was published, the risk score, and of course, my exploitation source. Here we can see the highest impact solutions that are tied to these specific vulnerability solutions. And as I scroll down, we can see our top 10 oldest vulnerable items and our top 10 vulnerabilities that are most prevalent on our assets within our instance. Again, beneficial information to make data-driven decisions. Last but not least, I've gone ahead and created my own custom tab here on my CISO dashboard. And you'll notice I have some relevant information that pertains to my specific persona. Now, as a CISO, I'm also involved with the network and security teams. So I'd like to know not only the closed security incidents around the analysis of my assignment groups, but I also want to break this down, particularly by category. So perhaps I'd like to know how many lost or stolen laptops have reported back in October, and how many spam sources we've also curated over the last quarter. In addition, when I'm going through my specific audits, I'd also like to know how many users have the ITIL role. Or better yet, how many super administrators exist within this particular instance? Common security practices suggest that we should have no more than five to seven super administrators across specific instances. So there might be an area of concern here that we might need to look into and address some of those access controls based on users, groups, and roles. Last but not least, I've created a quick widget here that is out of the box, showcasing the appliances that I have within my IT landscape. 26 appliances, three switches, and four routers that are currently in this instance. So immediately I can drill into these and understand more relevant information around those dependencies, the observables, and how those affected assets tie back to the user that might have some type of vulnerability, change management, or patch that is pending. And this was just a general overview of the CISO dashboard. For more information, feel free to visit our website at www.servicenow.com. And we're also happy to provide a full deep dive demonstration with our security operations team. Thank you.